Now that we've taken apart the timer, we can examine how it works. Just to make things easier to see, we've placed a clear cover over the gears. The first thing that we're going to look at is how the timer is powered. Underneath the large metal gear, there is a spring. We cannot remove the spring or else we will not be able to put the kitchen timer back together. However, inside, this is what the spring looks like. When the handle is turned on the timer, the spring is wound. Every spring wants to reach equilibrium. This means that there is a certain position that a unique spring always wants to be at. When stretched, just like a slinky, the spring reacts and returns to equilibrium. Since turning the handle to the right winds the spring, the handle turns to the left as the spring moves back. The next part of the timer we are going to investigate is the pendulum, which you can see here at the bottom swinging back and forth. We cannot see the pendulum actually work on this model because the handle must be attached, but this is the full pendulum view. What the pendulum does is regulate how quickly the main spring returns to its original position. A pendulum always swings the same number of times per second. Once the main spring starts the motion of the pendulum, the pendulum cannot swing any faster than its original speed, as you can see here. The pendulum is then attached to the gear train by an anchor. This anchor keeps the gears from turning any faster than the pendulum allows. You can see the gears turning here, and a close-up of the anchor can be seen here. The following gears after the anchor then turn even slower as they increase in size. This is because the larger the gear, the longer it takes for the gear to make one revolution. All of this ensures that the main spring goes back to its original position, and as it does, it turns the handle at a rate of one tick per second, or in 60 minutes for one full revolution. The final spring that we're going to investigate is the spring that controls the bell. This spring is located underneath the large white gear on the left. When the main spring is wound, it also unwinds this side spring. The spring is held in place by a ratchet on top of the timer, which we can see here. This is where the handle is connected. As the handle turns, it turns the ratchet. When the handle reaches the zero minute mark, a notch on the ratchet lines up with the bell arm, right here. The gear is freed then, and the spring is allowed to rapidly wind back up. This causes the bell arm to move back and forth and strike the metal casing, making the timer ring.